All right, welcome to another week of our online 1211 lab here in North Georgia. I'm Dr. Meyer. Uh, this week we're going to take a look at determination of specific heat of some different metals. Uh, and so I've actually gone ahead and set a lot of things up here already as far as general setup. Uh, I have a hot water bath here. Uh, I actually have samples that I've already masked out. We'll kind of go over all the data at the end here. Uh, but basically I've just masked out the amounts of these different uh, metals that we're going to be taking a look at. So I have aluminum for one sample, tin for another, uh, and then the last sample is actually a lead coil. Uh, and we're going to be trying to find the specific heats of each of these things. And I'm going to go through kind of one demonstration here fully for uh, the aluminum, and then I'll take probably a brief pause and I'll kind of show the other two as well. Uh, and for the lab, for all the workup and the data and uh, analysis, uh, you are going to have data for two trials. Probably only going to show one full trial here through the video, uh, just because the second trial is just going to be me doing the same things. Uh, and so I don't think you necessarily need to see two full, full versions of that. Uh, but in terms of general setup, what I have here, and you kind of see, like I said, I have a hot water bath. I have test tubes that have my different metal samples in them that are heating. And so if I grab one of these quick, let's see which one I'm actually grabbing for the, the next trial. We're going to be doing the aluminum. So I have aluminum metal that's here in the hot water bath. And so I'm going to leave that in the hot water. I don't want it to uh, start cooling down just yet. So we'll leave it in the hot water bath. And notice I also have a thermocouple that's down in the hot water bath. And if you look here on our LabQuest, it's telling me what the temperature is inside the hot water bath. That's the blue measurement on the bottom. So right now it looks like it's 97.1 degrees or about 97 degrees Celsius uh, in the hot water bath. That's important because that's going to be the initial temperature of our metal samples that I'm pulling out because these things have been in this hot water bath for a while, uh, making sure they get good and thoroughly warm. And then what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take, I have uh, a measured out amount of deionized water here in a graduated cylinder. I'm going to add this to a styrofoam cup that's going to act as our calorimeter for this experiment. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this volume recorded. Uh, and this one, I think it was at 34.85 milliliters roughly. Uh, so that's the volume of water that's in here. Thankfully for water, it's very convenient. Its density is pretty much exactly one. So that really means we have 34.85 grams of water we're gonna be using for this uh, particular trial. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that water to my calorimeter cup. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and measure what is the temperature of just that water before we add anything to it. Uh, once I've done that and I have that temperature down pretty pat, then I'm gonna go ahead and get this metal sample over here add it to my calorimeter, and I'm gonna actually kind of cover it a little bit and monitor that temperature. And we're gonna look for what is the highest temperature we're gonna reach at that point once we've mixed everything. That's gonna be the final temperature of kind of our combined metal and water uh, that we're mixing together. And we can use that to then do a bunch of calculations to figure out how much heat the water is gaining, how much heat the metal must be losing then as a result, uh, to be able to calculate eventually what the specific heat of that metal hopefully is. So I'm going to go through and kind of demonstrate all of this kind of in one go. So I'm going to add my water to our calorimeter, pretty straightforward, nothing crazy there. If we were in a really truly analytical lab, we can maybe actually get the mass of water by weight difference uh, for kind of before and after. Um, not really going to be a big concern for us here, I don't think. Um, now what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and just get an actual temperature for this room temperature water roughly. And as I kind of mix this around, you can see the temperature, the top temperature here changing a little bit. Uh, looks like it's about 22 and a half degrees sitting pretty stable there. So 22.5, that's gonna be my initial water temperature. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna leave this highlighted here. It's already dropped a little bit because I took the thermocouple out of the water. But I wanna write this down, water temperature, 22.5. And then for my hot water bath, 97.1, it's been pretty much pretty close to that, 97.1, 97.0 most of the time. So I'm going to go 97.1 as my initial hot metal temperature. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hot metal and I'm fairly quickly going to add all of this hot metal before it can really cool down into my water that's all room temperature. I'm going to kind of mix it up a little bit so that all the metal's down in the water, cover it so that not much heat can just escape to the air. And then I have a thermocouple here and this second cup that I put on top has a hole in the bottom of it so I can put this thermocouple in it. And what I'm going to do now is kind of mix things together and you see the temperature of my water that's gone up significantly here. So I'm going to wait for that temperature to kind of stabilize and not get any higher as I mix this. And I want everything kind of mixed up as best as possible um, so that there's kind of some even mixing and hopefully the temperature of this thermocouple is reading is the temperature of the whole solution. And it looks like 27.6 is a pretty stable end point. So that's going to be my final temperature for this trial. So. 27.6, I'm going to write that down here in just a second. So I can go ahead and take my thermocouple out now. Take my cover off as well. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually pour out any of the water that's in here. And when I, once I pour out all the water, I also want to dry my sample, put it back in its test tube and get it heating again so that I can do a second trial with it in a little while. Because the second, by the time I do trials on the other two metal samples, the aluminum one that I did here first, 
probably going to be heated all the way through so that I can actually just be ready to go for the next trial on it. And I can just kind of cycle all of these quickly doing what I just did so that I can get two trials for each metals and do this in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of wait time just standing around. Like if you wait to put your metal sample in the hot water until you're ready to do that particular metal, it's just so much extra wait time you're adding to the experiment for no real reason. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this water out, dry the sample, and then we'll all show the clip for the next metal that we're gonna take a look at. All right, so I have about 35.1 milliliters of water that I just uh, measured out. Um, that's what I'm gonna be adding to my calorimeter. So I'm going to add that to my calorimeter. Again, I'm going to let this kind of mix in here and get a good initial temperature for the water I'm going to be using here. Keep this hopefully lit up for everyone to be able to read. Looks like it's maybe a little bit warmer than the last time, about 22.8 for initial temperature. Uh, then I'm going to be starting with, looks like it's pretty, pretty stable there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the thermocouple out, probably see the temperature dip down slightly as I do that. That's fine. And it starts to go down. I'm going to record that temperature, 22.8 degrees. All right, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is get my 10 sample. So 10 is what I'm gonna be doing for the second one. I'm gonna find where my test tube holder here is. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 10 with my test tube holder. And again, I'm grabbing these with something else other than my bare hands, because these things are pretty hot. If you wanna use a hot glove for this, you could, but I'm gonna quickly transfer this before I stand here and talk too long. I wanna make sure all the 10 gets down in there. Again, mix it around a little bit to make sure all the 10 ends up in my water. Go ahead and add a cover. And we're gonna see what our temperature is increase to for the tin solution now. So it doesn't look like it's gotten quite as warm as the last one, although it's still going up, so it's still going to be a bit to go. And notice the, the temperature here, I forgot to make note of this, uh, our initial temperature for that tin when I pulled it out, it was 96.7, and I'll go back in the video and double check that here before I record everything again too, uh, but it looks like it was 96.7 roughly. Uh, for our initial temperature of the hot metal. That's slightly below where it was the last time, mainly because when I had to put that aluminum uh, test tube back in, it dropped the temperature some. All right. Now, having said that, it looks like our, our final temperature is pretty stable now at about 25.6 for this reaction. So it looks like at about 96.7 was the initial, and like I said, I'll, I'll double check that uh, for that metal, and I'll show a table of all the data here when I'm done. And it looks like at 25.6 is a final temperature uh, here for this trial for the 10. So again, I'm gonna record those values before I forget them. So 25.6 is a final temperature. And we started out at 96.7. And again, I, I will double check that value uh, in the video just to make sure that that's correct and correct that in the last kind of review of the data uh, as I go over it if I need to. <clears throat> and now at this point, same thing. I'm just gonna uh, wanna dry my sample. And so I didn't show this in the last uh, particular metal sample. Go ahead and show them this one. Um, right now, this I have a middle trough here. It serves as kind of a, uh, a sink as well. I can pour all the water contents down the sink here if I keep all of my tin. And then what I can do with the tin is I can actually just take it and just dump it into a paper towel. I'm going to dry all of it off. Now, the, the tin is, of all the metal samples we use in this lab, probably the, maybe the slightly most annoying to use because it comes in the smallest particles, kind of chunks. So you have to be very careful to make sure you get all of them out of your calorimeter, and get them all dry, and get them all back into your test tube for the next trial so that you can ha still have about that same mass when you mass everything as well. Usually, and kind of on that note for the masses that you're going to see in this, uh, you're going to see masses for trials one and two. Uh, I try to take basically just two masses of everything at the beginning and then just be really, really careful that I don't lose any metal sample. With 10, that's the one you really want to be careful of and make sure that you're getting all of the pieces of 10 back into your test tube. Uh, and that you're not going to lose any of the tin during some part of the experiment. Um, the aluminum, the wire is pretty easy to keep track of. You'll see the lead in a second is one single coil. It's really easy to keep track of. So for those, their masses, you don't expect them to change much. So I basically just take, took their mass in two different test tubes just to kind of compare and make sure their masses of the samples are about the same. Uh, and then that you'll, that's the numbers you'll see in the actual data tables um, here at the end. Uh, and the tin, I kind of did the same thing with the assumption that I'm not going to lose any of it. And so that's why you see me cater being kind of very careful, trying to make sure I'm getting all of the tin, not just out of the calorimeter, but then from the paper towel into the actual test tube, because some of these chunks are very tiny. Almost all of them here. And once I get this then back into the hot bath, then I'm pretty much ready to go to measure out more water to do the next trial for the lead. And at that point, that'll be uh, all of my first trial for everything. And like I said, probably all I show video-wise will be plenty long at that point. Um, and then we'll spend some time to talk about the data here at the end as well.
All right, so for our last part of the experiment, or really our, our third metal, it's not really the last part, we're still doing kind of the same things. I measured out this time to pretty much exactly 35.00 milliliters uh, of water. So I'm gonna add that to my calorimeter that I've already dried out. Again, remember we wanna make sure it's dried out good so there's no water already there. You can throw off measurements a little bit. So I have that ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get a approximate initial temperature again. So that's our top th temperature we see there on the lab quest. Going up to about 22 point, eh, still going up a little bit, so I'll wait still. Pretty similar to our last one, it looks like. Call that about 22.7. Looks like it stayed there for a good long while. So 22.7 is gonna be our initial water temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And then what I'm gonna do is 96 point, it actually looks like it's right at 97.0 at the moment. Uh, 97 point, I have a piece of tin here that I, that I missed that I wanna keep. 97.0 degrees Celsius, looks like that's our temperature inside the hot water bath. So that's gonna be my initial temperature that I'm gonna use for the lead. So now I'm gonna take this lead sample, which you see is just one big coil. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add this now to my water sample. Cover it to try and keep all the heat in. And again, we're gonna kind of mix things together here as we measure the temperature. And for this one, we probably are gonna see a smaller temperature change. And I'll let you guys go, I'll talk more about kind of the data analysis side in a second, uh, and we'll see kind of like why we maybe expected the smaller temperature change in this one. Uh, but it looks like right now, having added the lead coil, we're somewhere around about 24.1, haven't really seen a change there much for a little bit. So probably 24.1 looks like it's gonna be our final temperature of everything. And that'll be then the last data that we really need here for our first trials to everything. And what I'm gonna show next, I'm gonna kind of outline a data table with all the data that I'll show here in the video. Uh, that, that way we can then kind of talk a little bit about uh, so that everyone has a feel for kind of what the data is, what it's hopefully telling us, um, and give you kind of some head starts on your calculations that you'll do for this lab. Because while the experiment for this uh, lab is not hard, doesn't take too terribly long to do, especially once you have your kind of setup all organized, which you kind of skip kind of over that a little bit, because uh, the longest part, honestly, of this lab is just waiting for the water to heat up, and I did that in advance, so it kind of made this go pretty quick. Uh, once everything's set up, the trials go very quickly, but the calculations for this lab do take a while. It's one of the longer ones. Um, so I'm just going to double check this final temperature here. Uh, looks like it's a 24, I think 0.1 for a good long while, so we'll call that our final temperature. And once I write this down here, 24.1. And we had an initial temperature of 97.0 this time. We now have all the data that we should need for this experiment. We're writing our initial water temperature down to 22.7. And then I have all the, all the data that I'm gonna need here for uh, the next part. So next part, I'm gonna kind of set up where I can show you kind of some, uh, the table of all of our information. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the calculations we're gonna be doing with all of this information. All right, so here is all of our data from the experiment now that we've actually kind of finished everything. Uh, I went ahead and did a second trial for each metal. Uh, but rather than recording each one of those, I think that was, I thought that was just kind of overkill making you watch kind of that same demonstration over and over. I'd already done really the same thing three times, so watching me do it three more times, I don't think was necessarily going to add anything to anyone's experience. Uh, and so I, I want to just present all of the full data uh, for all of the trials. Uh, you'll notice I do have the masses included now as well, uh, since you didn't see me do those on video. Uh, and this Excel file will actually be available to you in, in its current capacity, you see it right now. Uh, on D2L, so you can find it there right beneath the lab demonstration video, uh, or sorry, the, the lab demonstration assignment uh, link. You should be able to see this data uh, kind of there with it. Uh, and so you can pull this up on your own and kind of work with it as you will from the Excel file. Now, in terms of calculations, things like that, um, some things that you'll probably notice as you go to do your calculations and some things that will hopefully be helpful for you guys that I want to kind of demonstrate with Excel, uh, this is all the starting data you really need. You don't need anything else. Um, what you will be doing, though, is a lot of calculations to fill out kind of the other tables uh, that CSE Pub is going to be asking for. And it's going to ask for things like the change in the metal temperature, the change in the water temperature, uh, and then as a result, like the heat loss by the metal, heat gain, uh, and then the heat gained by the water, things like that. So <clears throat> what we can actually uh, end up doing then uh, is you can actually have Excel do a lot of these calculations for you. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show how to make it set up everything, um, but I will show just kind of a, a quick demonstration of what I mean by this um, as far as things that might help you set up uh, or use Excel to do some of these calculations for you uh, that will just kind of save you some time, uh, both now and hopefully in the future uh, when you have kind of sets of data like this that you're going to be working with and doing very similar calculations for. Um, knowing how to use Excel is a really powerful tool and it's something we'll do uh, probably not a lot more in 12.11, but it's something we'll definitely do again in 12.12 uh, for some of our labs in there. So 
how we can use Excel to do some calculation for, uh, calculations for us. Uh, let's say we want to know our change in water temperature. So I'm just going to label a column here, so the water temperature change. Well, the temperature change for the water, and remember anytime we do like a delta T of any kind is always going to be a final minus initial. So our final temperature for both the water and the metal were the same, right, for each trial. And so here is our final temperature for this first trial for the water. Um, there was our initial temperature, and I could just put in my calculator 27.6 minus 22.5, but if I want Excel to do a bunch of things for me, what I can do is I can hit the equal sign, which basically tells Excel that I'm going to be doing a calculation. And instead of typing the numbers in, I can actually click the cells, the little boxes um, that those numbers are in. And so I'm going to take the final temperature of the water minus the box with my initial temperature for the water, and then I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to do that calculation for me. Uh, it tells me it's a positive 5.1 degree change. That's what I, I, it should be a positive change for the water, right? The water's warming up, so that's good. And the neat thing about doing this, if I go to the lower right-hand corner of the box I just entered all that calculation into, notice how my cursor changes from like a hand or a white kind of plus sign to those little black crosshairs. If I click there and drag, it'll actually do all those calculations I just did for the, basically the other rows. Uh, and the other way you could do this instead of kind of how I just showed it, your other option, if you go to that bottom right here, where you can actually double click. No, it actually doesn't want to do it here, unfortunately. It doesn't like that I have too many probably uh, empty columns or empty rows. But if you click and drag down, it should copy basically that calculation. A lot of times you can double click and it will do it as well. That will sometimes vary depending on your Excel version uh, that you're actually using too. But what I've done here now is I basically found all my water temperature changes. And I can go here and get rid of all my, my values that aren't for any trials. And now I have my delta T's for all my waters. And I only really entered the information of how to do the calculation once and excelled at all the rest for me. Um, and so it saves you time. And particularly like in this case, it, instead of doing six calculations, we did it really once. Uh, we'll have a lab in 12.12 where we have maybe like, you know, 30 or 40 data points where we can do a calculation with one of them and then copy it so that it does all the rest for us. Um, and so being able to kind of do those things to do calculations and manipulations with your data uh, to be able to kind of just access information that way uh, is a really useful tool. Uh, and one of the reasons why Excel is something that you really don't want to be afraid of. You really want to kind of just get used to using because it is really, uh, really advantageous in a lot of situations to be able to use Excel to do things rather than just do every single step of calculations by yourself. Um, so for instance, uh, I'll show one more step here too. Uh, if we want to know our heat gained by the water, right? So heat gained, this is our Q, right? Q equals MC delta T. Well, we have a mass for the water, right? We have a delta T for the water that we just found here. And now all we need is the specific heat of water, right? So I'm going to put uh, C for water. This is a value that you will have to look up. It'll be in your lab that you'll see, but it's like 4.18 roughly joules um, per gram degree Celsius. Uh, in fact, if you want an extra uh, significant figure, you could say 4.184 even. <clears throat> and I can copy that value just to all of them, just so it's there for everything. And if I want to calculate my heat gain by the water, I can use that Q equals MC delta T equation. Right? I'm going to say that my heat, this column, is going to be equal to right, my mass. Right? This is my mass. And remember, that was actually the volume in milliliters. But since water's density is just one gram per milliliter, that's our, our masses right, in grams. So I can now take my mass times right, my change in temperature, or sorry, actually, sorry, mass times C, so the M, uh, Q equals MC delta T, and then times my change in temperature, which was this cell. So I have my three pieces basically here that I've now entered. Hit enter, it finds my Q, and then I can click and drag and it'll find Q for all of my water trials. Um, and so it's really, really useful for that. Uh, and you can actually have Excel do kind of all the rest of the calculations for you if you want. Um, I'm not going to have this part probably in the Excel file that you guys see. I'm going to let you guys kind of recreate that just so you can kind of get that experience of using it if you want to do that way. If you don't want to do it with Excel like that, if you want to do it just by hand for each trial, by all means do that. That's fine. Um, I just think it is useful to kind of get used to using Excel to start doing some of these things uh, if you have access to it. <clears throat> now, uh, in terms of anything else, uh, if you for some reason don't have access to Excel at all at the moment, uh, you can just look at the data that's all here uh, and actually just do your calculations as normal and enter the values in the CSE pub. There shouldn't be any problems with that. Uh, you won't have to use Excel for this lab. Uh, like I said, I just think it's something that's useful to start getting in the habit of um, because there's going to be a lot of future applications of uh, Excel for pretty much any science or math class you'll probably take at some point down the road. Uh, so it's just kind of good things to start getting used to using. It has a lot of applications. Um, past that, I don't have a whole lot else to say uh, for this particular experiment. 
uh, kind of like safety and uh, waste wise that I usually like to talk about at the end, there isn't all that much. Uh, we use hot water and as long as we were careful in using the hot water safety wise, there wasn't much else to have to worry too much about. Uh, these metals, unless we were trying to eat them, aren't going to really pose us a lot of harm just handling with our bare hands. Uh, so it was really just a matter of drying things and kind of just putting things back where you got them originally if you were doing the lab in person. There's not, not a whole lot there that we have to kind of take into account from a waste perspective compared to maybe some of our other experiments. Uh, but that is all I have for this time. Uh, hopefully this gets you guys started on your calculations and that kind of makes sense and hopefully maybe teaches you guys a few things about Excel as well here. Uh, and then we'll see you all for the next lab.